chariot racers literally had their wrists tied to the reins of the horses, and if there was a crash, they could be dragged around the track by their team. Diocles managed to have a 24-year career without any major accidents. Diocles averaged between three to four races per week for the length of his career. So while Diocles was the most prolific charioteer in history, at least in Rome, he wasn't regarded as the greatest. Diocles was a volume charioteer, which was very difficult in its own right, but didn't earn the same level of quote-unquote greatness ascribed to others. In the end, he won 1,462 races and took second place in 1,438 more out of a total of 4,257 races he competed in. His total career winnings were 35,863,120 Roman sesterces. Trying to make comparisons in wealth from ancient periods to today is extremely difficult to near impossible. Populations were different, productivity has improved exponentially, and what you could buy with your money was totally different. However, we do know that Diocles was unquestionably one of the richest people in Rome when he retired. His wealth was only surpassed by a few senators and the emperor himself. He had enough money to feed all of Rome for a year or pay for the entire Roman military for several months. Using these purchasing power comparisons, it's estimated that his fortune would be worth around $15 billion today. When he retired at the age of 42, he purchased a villa in the Italian countryside and retired. And from there, he vanished from history. The only reason we know so much about Diocles as we do was because of his fame and success on the track. So the next time you hear of some athlete making an obscene amount of money, just remember that they still can't hold a candle to the richest athlete of all time, Gaius Apuleius Diocles. I estimated that the original Colosseum cost something like 100 million sestertii, which I equated, more or less arbitrarily, with $2 billion. If, as it seems... The cost of producing a modern replica would be half that figure, or even less. The difference is a testimony to modern construction technology, whose efficiencies counterbalance the vastly higher costs of modern labor. Around $2 billion in today's world in comparison to late-stage Rome's economic standing, which is very similar pricing to what is currently being built in the possible late-stage American empire. Taking the most expensive outlier of SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles that was built for $5.5 billion in 2020, number two on the list is $1.9 billion for Alliant Stadium in Las Vegas in 2019. Most modern-day stadiums have a cost just under $2 billion. The NFL is turning you down. I ask for the favor of telling you myself. They're really going to walk away from this bit. Sports franchises are how we like people in this country. And you're not guilty. You're a robber baron. There is a sneaky connection with the National Football League, which is the modern day Roman sport of choice, adding games to their schedule when American inflation grows at a rate higher than normal. The NFL moved from 14 games to 16 games in 1978. The Great Inflation Period of America was in the 1970s, but the bulk of it was in the late 70s. While it may be surprising to some that the average inflation rate for the decade as a whole was only 6.8%, this rate is double the long-run historical average and nearly triple the rate of the previous two decades. In addition to the high average inflation rate, Americans were plagued by extremely variable inflation rates during the 1970s. Then, in March of 2021, 43 years later, the NFL moved from 16 games to 17 games, which transpired in conjunction with the infamous COVID pandemic era inflation. After four decades of low U.S. inflation, high inflation emerged as a central economic problem of the COVID era. As of September 2022, the rate of CPI inflation over the previous 12 months was 8.2%. NFL adds games when inflation goes high and extra NFL games mean higher inflation, both equal 333 in English ordinal. By the time of Nero's reign, 54 AD to 68 AD, 
The Daenerys had been gradually debased by diluting the silver with copper. This telltale sign of inflation continued until it was essentially replaced in the 3rd century AD. Late stage Rome was already in a high inflationary environment. Are you starting to see the parallels to today? So by the time Gaius was finally born in 104 AD, 372 years before the fall of Rome, at the 70% completed mark, the silver Daenerys had already been debased to 80% of its original value. Athletes being paid enormous amounts of money is in connection to the times we are living in. Big athlete contracts and money debased equals 333 in English ordinal. Big athlete contracts and money debasement equals 137 in reduction, the 33rd prime. Money debased helps entertainment equals 330 in English ordinal, where zero is just a value placeholder. We must remember athletes are paid to entertain and not to be taken at their word authoritatively. They may be able to afford much, but they are not in powerful positions like one may think. Most athletes were paid handsomely, but were still considered slave class. Unlike most athletes today, wanting to be regarded as kings and royalty, Gaius didn't desire a world of high society. He could have funded an army if he wanted to, he could have bought huge tracts of land or been a patron of the arts. He could have commissioned epic poems to be written in his honor. He could have ordered lavish sculptures and statues to cement his place in history and ensure his legacy resonates throughout the centuries. But he didn't. Though he had the means to, it wasn't common for athletes to do so. In the Roman Empire, the prospect of spending as much money as Diocles earned was far more difficult. There was the concept of land ownership, but wealth was more of a social status indicator than something to be spent. In order to become a member of the Roman Senate during the imperial era, a prospective senator would, barring intervention from the emperor, need to be of senatorial class, i.e. be the son of a senator, and have one million sesterces on hand. Generally speaking, this was the pinnacle of aspirations for a Roman citizen. But unless Diocles somehow managed to find favor with the emperor, it was out of his grasps despite his wealth. Sports money is not power equals 333 in English ordinal. Athletic wealth does not mean power equals 133 in reduction. As the United States of America comes up on its first ever Pluto return in 2024, will it mark the end of the empire? Join my Patreon today for only $5 to receive a monthly esoteric documentary on your favorite sports athletes and events. Real, raw, uncut, and uncensored without the limitations of YouTube. Join today to see the other side of the sports world.